how Bitcoin has suffered another blow to its credibility after hackers stole about $65 million worth of the cryptocurrency. The breach was one of the largest uh, uh, to happen on one of the biggest exchanges, the Hong Kong-based Bitfinex. Authorities are still investigating the attack. Bitcoin plunged on word of the theft before erasing those losses today. Blockchain analyst Chris Bernetsky of ARK Invest joins us now for more on the implications of the hack. Okay, Chris, uh, first of all, just set us straight. What has happened here? Supposedly, this firm had some of the most state-of-the-art encryption, consumer protection devices, yet they got hacked. Do we know why? So I wouldn't go so far to say it had some of the most state-of-the-art technology. What it did have, have was some of the best liquidity uh, in terms of Bitcoin exchanges out there. But you got straight to the heart of the matter, and that is what is the technology securing the Bitcoin at Bitfinex? And when we look a little bit deeper at that, what we see is Bitfinex was securing their customers' Bitcoin using a hot wallet form of security. What a hot wallet means is that wallet is connected to the internet. So that means a hacker can remotely access those funds. The preferred security model for someone custodying a lot of Bitcoin is called cold storage. And what cold storage means is the mechanism that secures the Bitcoin is physically separated from the internet. That makes it impossible for a hacker to remotely break in. They would have to physically break in before they even attempt to perform such a hack as occurred on Bitfinex. Hmm, fascinating stuff, Chris. Now, just again for the layperson here, I mean, when a company is hacked like this and 65 million disappears, is that untraceable? I mean, you'd think with a digital currency, you'd have some kind of digital stamp on it that might allow you to return that Bitcoin to the owner, but that's not the case, is it? Well, so it is perfectly traceable. This is where Bitcoin's blockchain is a transparency machine. So we can see exactly how the Bitcoin moves. What we can't do is we can't force the Bitcoin to move uh, without the key that secures the Bitcoin. So what the hacker has done is he penetrated Bitfinex's systems, the, the, the exchange that got hacked, and he moved the Bitcoin to his own custody. So right now what Bitfinex is doing is they're working with investigators, they're performing network forensics because what they're trying to do is track down the identity of the hacker. If they can do that, then that is the best way to return the Bitcoin to those who have been harmed. Now, in terms of forcing the hand of Bitcoin, that's impossible, and that's the value of the immutable blockchain that Bitcoin offers the world. Okay, so just to understand that, Chris, even though the coin is taken by the hacker, once the hacker uses that coin, that coin is anonymous? I mean, you, you, in other words, you can't tell when the coin re-enters into... Um, you know, at a moment of transaction between a buyer and a seller? So we can trace every transaction. So we can trace that coin. Now, what the hacker can do is they can employ complex techniques, something called coin join, to basically mix their coins with other people's coins. And this is to try and confuse uh, network analysis from figuring out exactly who the hacker was. But you're really getting to the heart of, of something that uh, needs to be better understood regarding Bitcoin, and that is that Bitcoin is a completely transparent network, so we see every single transaction that, that occurs. What we don't know is the exact identity. So this is where it's a pseudonymous network uh, because the identities are concealed um, behind strings of, of digits, not necessarily names. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. So, Chris, I mean, what, what's the implication of all this? I mean, we saw a sell-off in Bitcoin, but, you know, it, does this represent a serious threat? It sounds more like it's not a problem with Bitcoin. It's a problem with these Bitcoin banks, vendors, whatever you want to, intermediaries, whatever you want to call them. That sounds like where the issue is right now. Exactly. Uh, you, you hit it exactly. So the way I like to phrase it is this. Uh, we all have operating systems on our computers. I have an Apple operating system. You may have a Windows operating system. We can think of Bitcoin's blockchain as an operating system. Now, on top of operating systems, we have applications. For example, when I want to access the Internet, I use Safari. That's my, my application to access the Internet. 
Now, in terms of Bitfinex, Bitfinex is an application that sits on top of Bitcoin's operating system. So now, just because the Bitfinex application was hacked, doesn't mean that had anything to do with a vulnerability in the underlying operating system. So it's really important for listeners to realize Bitcoin's technology and Bitcoin's blockchain continues functioning exactly how it has set out to do. No security has been compromised within that. It is a small group of developers who run the Bitfinex application that have basically made an error and allowed an, a hacker to penetrate and steal these funds. The other thing I would like to emphasize is really the security mechanisms that these applications are using. So I mentioned cold storage. I would say the gold, the gold standard out there is a company called Coinbase. Coinbase custodies more Bitcoin than anyone else in the world. 98% of their Bitcoin is stored in cold storage. That means it is locked away from hackers. The other 2% that's you know, available to the internet uh, for, for users to use uh, at, at any moment, that is 100% backed by top-rate insurance carriers. So again, this hey, Chris, is where we uh, need to... That, that is, uh, that's an important takeaway from this interview. There is a safe way to hold this uh, cryptocurrency, and uh, you've helped explain a pretty complicated issue to us in simple and clear terms. I appreciate that today. Thank you. Rio